This is Habakkuk 3, because again, his prophets saw the destruction to come at the second coming of Jesus. Habakkuk 3 and 1 reads, A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shagani. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath. Remember mercy. See, Habakkuk saw a vision of what was to come upon this world. What is fast approaching. He's died and was buried. But we are fast approaching this time that he saw about. That he is prophesying about. Verse 3. God came from T-Man and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. It says in verse 6, he stood and measured the earth. It means he judged the earth. He beheld and drove asunder, drove apart the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Now we're here when this talk, when this is talking about this particular scripture is talking about everlasting mountains and perpetual hills. It's talking about nations and leaders. He's taking over. Okay, let's go to let's go to verse eleven to know that we are talking about the second coming of Jesus. Because remember. We read that the sun was going to be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven in Matthew the 24th chapter. Let's see if we're talking about, and that's the sign for the second coming of Jesus. Let's see if we're talking about the same time. Habakkuk 3 and verse 11 reads, The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Okay, so we're talking about, again, the second coming of Jesus. It says, Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Okay, we read about how his servants were going to fight in John the 18th chapter. It says, Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation of thine anointed. Thou wounded the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation of the neck. Okay, it says, Thou didst, verse 15, Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. Now, waters represent people. Okay, and he is coming with his troops. To destroy man. Many, many, many people are going to be destroyed during the Great Tribulation. Oh, I know over a third part the scripture says. But even after that, you're going to have wrath poured out on the whole world. Listen to what Habakkuk, Habakkuk's thoughts were when he realized and understood what was really going to take place. This is in the 16th verse. Habakkuk 3 and 16 reads, When I heard my belly tremble, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Again, John 18 my kingdom is not of this world, for if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. That I should not be delivered up to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from this. We have just read at this same sign, the sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows, they went in at the shining of thy glittering spear. The Lord is coming back in wrath. But let's read about these troops and this invasion. In Revelation the 19th chapter. Listen to what John the Revelator saw in, Re in Revelation 19 and verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon it was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. See, we know Jesus as this lamb. People have this misconception about Jesus, about he, as if he's only one fact. But he's a, a lamb, but he's also a lion. Okay? Lions are ferocious beasts, okay? They are dangerous, and they bring about destruction to all their prey. This is what the Lord is going to do to practically the whole world. It's going to be just like it was in the day of the days of Noah. Bring about destruction on his prey, and the people are going to be the prey. This is not going to be a happy event for most people. Again, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and, un and in righteousness. See, this is righteous indignation. He doth judge and make war. 
Verse 12 reads, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Okay? His eyes were as a flame of fire because his eyes were red with indignation, symbolically speaking. Verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Okay? Symbolic of all the killing that he is going to do. And his name is called the Word of God. We know from John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. You read down about the 14th verse it says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about Jesus. We know this is talking about Jesus. Verse 14, and the armies, again, my servants will fight. Habakkuk said, you, you will invade them with your troops. That's what even Job says. Lord, hide me in the grave, keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. It says in verse 14 again, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Okay, again, these two bands. These angels and these resurrected beings. And out of his mouth go the sharp sword that with it he shall smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. See, what was a winepress? A winepress back in the old days, they used to put grapes in a big winepress. And you get in there and you tread. You tread the grapes. You step on the grapes. And you can see all the blood of the from the grape, on your feet, on your garments. See, he is treading. That's why even as you read in Psalm 110, what we just read, he says, Sit thou at the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies that footstool. I told you you're gonna be putting his foot on all on top of man, killing them, destroying man, crushing them. Just like they do in the grapes in the wine press back in the old days. He says, And out of his mouth go the sharp sword that with it he shall smite the nation. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Again, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. Verse 17. And I saw an angel. This is what John saw. He says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Because you are going to have multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of death. Of people. Like we saw, we saw in Haiti pictures of people lined up in the street. Brothers and sisters, that is nothing compared to what is coming upon this world. That is a drop in the bucket. That is nothing. And I mean nothing. I'm talking Total, practically total destruction. You have over 6 billion people, and I'm talking about the majority of people being killed between the time of the Great Tribulation and the second coming of Jesus. That's what's coming on the world. It's time to get your house in order. It's time to bring forth fruits, meat, meat for repentance. It's time to leave the paganism behind. It's time to leave the false worship behind. It's time to find out what the God of this creation requires, and it's time to do it. Verse 18, so he, again, he called these, these birds and these beasts, these scavengers, they eat dead things to the great supper. They, their bellies are going to be filled. In one scripture it reads, hey, they're going to they're gonna eat on it in the winter and in the supper. It's going to be a long time that they're going to be eating these dead bodies. There's too many to bury. Verse 18, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Okay, so this is what he called them for. This is what he called these beasts for. It is to eat all the dead bodies. Let's, let's go to, let's see, let's go to Jeremiah. Because again, the Lord doesn't do these things without revealing it to his prophets. Okay? Jeremiah 25 and verse 30 reads, Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from 